Today, we're going to talk about an interesting Hollywood mystery involving an A-list actress and a mob bodyguard. Come along and let's get into it. We're at Oakland Cemetery in Woodstock, Illinois right now, and we're going to visit a couple interesting folks today. One of which there's a very interesting story and a scandal related to. His name is Johnny Stompanato. He was born in 1925 here in Woodstock, Illinois. His mother passed away only six days after his birth. After his first year of high school, Johnny's father sent him to Kemper Military School, and then he joined the U.S. Marines. He served three years in Okinawa and in China before he was discharged in 1946. He met his first wife while stationed in China, and they returned right here to Woodstock. Shortly after, she gave birth to their son, John Stompanato III. One year later, he uprooted and left his wife and son, and he moved to Hollywood, California. His wife was granted a divorce based on the grounds of desertion. He briefly married actress Helen Gilbert, who ended the marriage after only three months. Stompanato owned a business called the Myrtlewood Gift Shop in Westwood, California, selling pieces of pottery and wood carvings as fine art, and through connections made in Los Angeles, he became the bodyguard for gangster Mickey Cohen and an enforcer for his entire crime family. By 1957, Johnny Stompanato was in a relationship with actress Lana Turner, and their relationship was described as stormy at best, with frequent arguments and fights. At one point, he became so jealous of Lana's relationship with actor Sean Connery that he flew to England and threatened him with a gun. Connery fought back, and basically Stompanato was reported to the police before being quietly deported back to the United States. On April 4th of 1958, Stompanato was in an altercation with Lana Turner in her home. He reportedly threatened to slash her face or something to that effect, and her daughter Cheryl went downstairs to grab a knife and went back upstairs to confront Johnny. Supposedly, the story goes, he lunged towards her and into the knife, but it ended up being classified as a justifiable homicide. Johnny Stompanato was brought back here to Woodstock, Illinois for burial. Now I'm going to show you one of the crime scene photos, so if you don't want to see this, please look away. Now this is one of the few photos that was taken by the police on that tragic night. And this is the home that it happened in, the home of Lana Turner back in 1958. And as you can see, I'm going to show you another picture of the house right now. This is what it looks like today. As you can see, it really hasn't changed much. Here's one more look at the final resting place of Johnny Stompanato. Pretty short life, only 32 years old. Now we're not quite done yet. We're going to wander the cemetery a little bit as we usually do. Because there is one more person that I want to take you to go and visit. Now this is kind of a neat family plot here. Now as you know, I, I love exploring cemeteries and even more so when you can find links to history. But there's going to be one more up here. Now there's a guy by the name of Chester Gold. He was born in 1900. And in 1931, he was hired by the Chicago Tribune as a cartoonist. He introduced the comic strip Dick Tracy to the Detroit Mirror, and he drew the comic strip from his Woodstock home for the next 46 years. To stay informed of police methods, Chester took courses in forensics and investigative procedures. Gold retired in 1977, and then he passed away on May 11th of 1985 here in Woodstock, Illinois. Now this is the final resting place of Chester Gold and his wife Edna. As you can see, there is a image of Dick Tracy here on his tombstone. And just above it, somebody left a little action figure of Dick Tracy. It's nice to see that people still remember and memorialize these people. That's a great quiet monument. Now, Dick Tracy is obviously a kind of a pop culture phenomenon. It was They made a movie about it. It was a, a very popular comic strip for a long time in a ton of newspapers. 
and this would have been Chester's parents. Of his father Gilbert, 1871 to 1949, and mother Alice, 1879 to 1966. Now there is a very old mausoleum over here. It doesn't look like there's, you know, a whole lot going on over here, but it is closed today. It'd be kind of neat to get in there and see who's buried in there and what's going on, but uh, you know, unfortunately we can't do that today. I may try again in the future. But there's something else over here I want to take a look at. I've never seen anything quite like this in a cemetery. It says, in memory of the 48 children buried here from the Chicago Industrial Home for Children in Woodstock from 1894 to 1926. Some flowers here and people left a couple of toys. But no real individual markers, just uh, quite a few crosses. That's kind of odd. I haven't really seen anything like this in a cemetery. But it's a nice memorial. What do you think? Have you guys ever seen anything like this? Now we're in the back of the cemetery and there's a, a kind of a fenced off plot here where there's only a couple of burial plots. But there's something else kind of weird. If you go over here, there's a little wooded area and there's a whole bunch of random obelisks and stones and things like that. So it kind of makes you wonder, were these ones that were replaced in the cemetery by families? Or, you know, I, I kind of wonder what these are for. They are labeled, but it's kind of creepy to see this back here. Not exactly sure. If any of you guys know anything about this cemetery, Leave a comment and let me know what these might be. But that's pretty much all I have for today. This is Oakland Cemetery in Woodstock, Illinois. Hopefully you guys learned a thing or two. And thanks for being here, and we'll catch you on the next video.